YouTube. Piccolo Piccolo East Coast Review, back again with another review, and today we're here to do a little review on the Revolver. That's right, the Revolver Dual 18650 in parallel, straight from GI Mods in the Philippines. This is a T6 aluminum body and cylinder okay has all copper contacts on the inside so your negative contacts down below and all the internal uh, contacts are made of copper okay what i like about this device mostly is the fact that a it feels solid and b it's aluminum aluminum is super conductive especially working with copper so i really really like those mixtures of metals there okay and there's some cons about this device, which they're not huge cons. It's just a matter of upkeep, okay? Out in, in, in Pinoy, you know, they, they literally do everything big, okay? Everything's got to be big, flashy, and performance has to fucking stand out. Nothing can come from the Philippines and say, oh, that Pino, yeah, Filipinos, when they make shit, it, they make weak shit. No. You will never hear anybody say that because Filipino box mods are fucking performers okay this has got a lot of positives and it's got some cons to it but i don't mind the cons because to me they're not cons because i can avoid the cons just by doing simple things now a lot of people i know are used to regulated devices you know vaping at higher wattages put two batteries in it you know not worry about anything it's got short circuit protection it's got this it's got that all these things to help them become lazy okay now i'm not lazy so when it comes to a device like this i'm simply just gonna be happy to use it okay and i understand it's like owning a gun when you buy a gun you have to service it you have to oil it take it apart make sure your springs are clean or there's gas in it or this or that or whatever the case may be whatever kind of gun that you have whether it's a pellet gun or a rifle or a 22 or 45 or whatever you own you know you have to keep it maintained and oiled at all times the wood the stock this that the barrel everything has to be cleaned and maintained just like mechanical box mods that are fully mechanical you have to maintain them there's metal pieces in here that move around and so forth that need to be oiled and cleaned and maintained you know so i don't mind owning a device like this simply because whatever the cons people are telling me so far it's based on the fact that they don't take apart their devices and they don't clean them you know they have so many devices that you know, I don't have the time to take that apart because I got to review so many other devices. So this device, you have to understand, if anybody said anything negative about it, the first thing you're always going to hear is, oh, the weight. Yeah, it's a heavy motherfucker. Yeah, it is heavy because it's a solid T6 aluminum with brass and copper accents and copper internals. So, of course, yes, this is going to be, it's going to be heavy right off the bat. Another con is the price, $170 for this dual 18650 parallel. But... Is that so much a con for certain people? Not for me, because I spend money on mechanical mods. So it doesn't matter to me. Price doesn't mean shit to me. If I want it bad enough, I'm going to buy it. Trust me. Okay. Uh, it's, got a, it's got an adjusting pin, a copper pin with a flathead on the top of a 510 connection with a brass female threaded 510 connection. Okay. So I like the brass female connection that's threaded because copper sometimes you can cross thread copper very easily on certain 510 so i like that they did it in brass another con you're going to come across is the firing button okay the switch now the switch becomes an issue for certain people simply because you know uh they have a lot of juice like leakage or over pour on their rda so if we go up close you can see that this thing literally you know it's it's very tight the space between that brass firing pin and the aluminum body itself it's very very tight you know and with tight spaces what happens is is you know we shed our skin like all day long we, you may not even know it but we're shedding skin constantly okay so when your fingers pushed up against this button you're pushing in you're kind of scraping your dead skin cells off into the switch itself then if you over drip one day, some 
e-liquid will go in there. And e-liquid has got sugars in it and so forth. So what happens with sugars? After a while of putting some friction on it, it starts to get sticky. And then after a while, it could freeze up on you and literally just become like a cement or like a glue. So this button needs to get maintained. And by maintaining it, I mean taking apart this device and oiling it. If you oil it and keep it oiled, it's going to last forever. Okay. So you'll notice on the bottom of this box, you'll have three flathead screws that are about the same size and one that's a little bigger. Then you have the two negative copper contacts that are flatheads as well. Basically, to take this apart, you would just need to loosen three of the smaller screws and one of the medium sized screw. Okay, once you take it apart, you just basically take a, a little bit of three in one oil. You know, I have three in one oil always. I'm always using it. Three in one oil. It's machine oil. That's all it is. It's a lubricant and it keeps contacts clean and it keeps your device firing and it keeps it updated and maintained. Okay, uh, another con I heard about this device is that, you know, there's certain marks on the aluminum, which comes with aluminum at times, you know, at times with aluminum, you know, you'll see certain things on it. So if I zoom in close real quick and check this out, you get these grayed marks. You can see right there is a gray mark right at those seams right there. If we look at another side of this, I know there's another one on here. Yeah. There's a little dot. You can see that gray dot right there. See that gray dot on a shiny part of the aluminum right there? Yeah, well, this is just oxidation. You know, aluminum oxidizes pretty quick. Okay, so it's another thing you have to do as far as, you know, maintaining your device is simply just keeping it oiled. You know, keep your device oiled. Maintain it, you know. If you keep and maintain your device properly, it will last forever. It will not let you down and it will perform. That's the whole thing about GI mods. You know, they're a little pricey, they're a little heavy, but they work. That's it. You know, they basically work. They're hard hitters, they're positive breakers, you know, so basically it's um it's not using the negative portion because if it was using the negative portion of the RDA, you could actually make contact with the negative portion of the body. So if you have, this is, if power is going through the negative and you made contact with the negative of your RDA, then this device would be firing right now. But it is a positive breaker, meaning it's using the positive, which is the firing button, to close the circuit. Now I want to show you what an open circuit and a closed circuit looks like real quick. So I'm going to show you two diagrams real quick. Let's check it out. All right, guys, so what I wanted to show you is what a open circuit looks like, okay? You have the battery, which is over to the left, and there is wire um, making contact with the negative portion of the battery on the top, and on the bottom, there is the positive, right? Now, if we follow this diagram on the top portion where it's making contact to the battery, it goes up, it hooks over to the right, and then it hooks downward to a switch. That is the negative portion of this diagram. Where that switch is, basically, that is an open circuit. You can see that the switch is open. It doesn't continue the flow of electricity because it's like a door. It's swung open. This is considered an open circuit simply based on the fact that there is, there is current being connected but not closed. So once you push the switch in, meaning once you close the door on a switch, then contact will be made continuous to the light bulb. And then once it goes through the light bulb, there is a little coil instead of the light bulb. And if you look at it, it is a coil. There is a positive and a negative inside of a light bulb that leads to a coil. And it, through the course of time, that coil will burn out and you will need a new light bulb, basically. Okay? So once current is flowing through the coil inside of a light bulb, it will then pass through the light, create uh, light energy from the intense amount of resistance that a light bulb has from the coil glowing so much. And then once it passes through the light bulb, it makes its way back into the positive of the battery. 
and then continues the loop in circles through the square. It just constantly goes, just kind of like a, like a, I don't know, a, a little race car set, you know, with the with the clickable tracks that touch each other. Basically, it's going round and round and round and round and round, you know. So this is basically a representation of what a mechanical box mod does. You know, you put your batteries in, you close it, you tighten up your contacts, and then it is an open circuit, okay? As soon as you push in that fire button, which is considered the switch, it closes the circuit, meaning that now everything is making full contact, and the coil, which in this case is represented as a light bulb, will glow. But on a mechanical box, once you have your RDA connected to your mechanical box, your coil that's in your RDA will glow and light up because it's creating so much resistance because it's slowing down the flow of electricity. Here's another quick little diagram to better understand it a little more. Basically, on the left you have an open circuit, on the right you have a closed circuit. On the left, the switch, which is circled by the dotted lines, is open. On the right hand side, you can see the switch is pushed, closing the circuit, therefore lighting up the LED bulb. So now you know what a closed circuit is and an open circuit. At least you have a better understanding on how these things work, okay? And now that you know that, you know that if you have loose change in your pocket or whatever, it's not going to interfere with this. It's not going to make it fire any way, shape, or form, okay? So that's good to know. I've had another person come to me and say, dude, how do you like this thing? Because I don't really like the fact that I can't get my my um, revolver to close for some reason. I'm like, how? It's so simple. It works on a hinge. Basically, you have this brass hinge here, which the brass hinge is connected to the two copper negative contacts on the bottom. Okay. Now, if you look in here, you'll see there's a yellowy brass screw. Well, that screw is right here. This bigger flathead brass right here in this side. What this is doing, it's sending the negative current up into the top portion of the negative of this mechanical box, okay? Because this box is in two pieces. You can see there's a seam right there and there's a seam right there. It's ensuring that the contact, that the current is making its way up to the 510 connection. Okay, so, and now to open this, like I said, this is on a hinge, so you push on the opposite side, and you can see what that does is it reveals your two batteries that sit inside this revolver, which is removable, by the way, so you can take this and slide this off. Okay, there's a hole on the bottom in which the hinge goes into. So basically when it comes time to close it, all you have to do is just put your battery revolver, your battery holder, back on the hinge and just roll it back in. And that's it. No special tricks, no magic sorcery going on, no crazy things going on. Just put it back in and screw in your negative contacts. I mean, it's really not that difficult, you know. It, it, maintaining these boxes is oiling them okay that's the big responsibility you have in owning this is keeping your hinges and your contacts and metal on metal and threads and this and that you just have to keep them lubricated and once they're lubricated they work great I have no issues with this device you know people complain about the weight well it's solid T6 aluminum and it's quite big and uh, not that bulky but it's quite big and it's going to have weight to it, okay? Especially since you got two 18650 batteries in there. Solid CNC aluminum. Would this be heavier if it were copper? Yes. Would it be heavier if it were brass? Yes, because those are heavier, denser metals. Aluminum is lightweight, but this is T6 aluminum. So it's a stronger version of your average aluminum. But this is actually pretty solid. It's pretty nice. And if you keep it shiny, it'll be super shiny. The one negative I can say about it, that there's really nothing you could do about it except wipe it, is that it's a fingerprint magnet. That's about it. 
it gets fingerprinted up like crazy. And because it's glossy and shiny, depending on how you handle it, it may get scratched up often. You'll get little micro scratches within the metal and you'll see them, you know, you'll see them through a course of time. So that's a con basically. All right. That's a legitimate con because there's nothing you could do about that except maybe use uh, a very fine granulated paste and buff this out. But why would you need to go to that extreme, really? I don't really see the, necess uh, the necessity for that. So this is what our revolver looks like, completely broken down, basically. It's not very complex to take apart, and it's not complex to put back together again. But I will say, on one hand... This is the brains right here of the connections, okay? Obviously, you can see this is where the switch makes contact with the copper connections. So our side button, when we push in our side button right here, you see on the inside, this is fully manual. So that copper contact makes connection with this flap right here make connection with this flap and bring the coppers together to make a connection these designs out of the philippines these boxes these manual boxes that are made that are that are made out of the philippines these were all designed in a certain way they're designed for the guy who's looking to build low and vape uh you know big ass fucking plumy clouds that's what these 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 designs are made for they're made for that kind of vapor now uh our top is made of brass that's our 510 threaded connection up top which is made of brass now what i like to do is uh, with these manual boxes i like to add just a little bit of machine oil a little lubrication to anything that has uh friction involved because you know anytime you drip you're going to overjuice, and whenever it overjuices, the juice has got to go somewhere, so it goes within the box itself. This is a CNC aluminum box, but the uh, firing button, as you can see, has Delrin. That Delrin can get dirt and debris trapped in there as well as juice. So I'm just going to go ahead and just make a few drops, put a few drops of machine oil in there, just to keep it lubricated and to prevent it from seizing up. Because the last thing in the world you want is for this button right here to get caked up with juice around the brass, okay? This way, if you were going to fire the, the device, you don't want it getting stuck. If dirt and debris gets stuck in there, you don't want that either. So, you put a little drop right there. Just kind of, you know, get it nice and wet in there. You know, if you're afraid of getting machine oil on your RDAs, just take this, wipe it with a towel. And you're good, just as long as there's a little lubricant in there to keep this freely moving. So I'm going to put this back together, and it's fairly simple to do so. I just got to remember that the flat part right here needs to go where the firing switch is, and the 510 connection is right here, which this is an adjustable 510 connection. If you go clockwise, you're basically um, pushing it in. If you go counterclockwise, you're bringing it out. Okay, 510 facing the 510 hole. Once you put it in place, the 510 is automatically centered. So you don't have to worry about getting that pin in the center. Then this is our pre-cut Delrin which holds this in place so it fits perfectly in there see that now this is where our power from our negative grounds will make connection into here basically okay um, basically what happens is, is this brass rod is what connects the power of the negatives of the batteries right here through the CNC to aluminum. So when I put this on here, I want to make sure I line up that hole first to make sure that brass on the top is going to thread in the right way. 
So when I screw this in, I want to make sure that this screws in correctly. Now this little screw right here is what holds the block in there all together. All right, make sure it's lined up 100%. Okay, seems real solid. Now the barrel, which is the battery holder, you can see it's CNC aluminum straight through. There's no base to it. Okay, now this section with the shells would need to go up top. So when I put this piece here, slide it on. Now this just works just like a gun basically. So you got to just push your magazine in and that's it. Now a lot of people said they've had difficulty with this this magazine getting stuck. Well, you have to make sure when you push it in that you're rolling it in. Not just pushing it in cuz sometimes when you push it in, it can get stuck. Some people will go like, "What the hell? I can't close this," you know? But just got to make sure that as it's going in, it's rolling in. Then when you get your batteries in, just simply tighten up your negative copper contacts, screw on an RDA, and then you'll be fine. Hopefully you found this uh, educational and helpful, this video. Uh, if it gives you a better understanding on how these mechanical box mods work, especially the ones from the Philippines. I have yet to see a Filipino box mod made incorrectly, poorly, or shitty. Maybe I haven't come across a lot of them, but I thought I have. I have like fucking 30 boxes from the Philippines, and this is fucking dope. You can find that at two vape decks available for 170 bucks. Uh, if it's out of your price range, I'm sorry, but if you're looking for something durable, heavy, strong, and fires like a son of a bitch, and looks pretty cool, you'll like this. Mm, I get zero hot button zero never had a zero, never had a hot button on here and i love the fact that it's using a positive for the breaker on here for the switch you want to close the circuit it's closing off the positive portion of the batteries not the negative in most cases the negative portion is what was being used to close the circuit on most box mods so if you had a penny or a nickel or a quarter in your pocket and it came in contact with the body of your uh, mechanical box and the RDA itself then it would start firing in your pocket whereas in this case it will never do it with this mod so for me to YouTube peace out like comment up subscribe I'm out of here latest